I'd say that one of the biggest secrets we try to, try to keep is this sense of, of autonomy or a sense of pride or a sense of achievement. I mean, all of those things are, are things that as you really give yourself over to the miracle, you feel like it's like being washed away. Like the idea of, of being, that you're important in some kind of special way or the feeling that you're loved by a special person, or, or that somebody has, is giving special attention to you. Those are some of the, the very subtle kind of secrets. It's like we're playing a game of hide and seek. We've come to this planet to forget our, our divine self, and we're playing hide and seek now, and we're, we're trying to, to hide our divine self and play all these different games. And it's, it's a pretty upsetting game. Uh, pretty depressing and it doesn't really go anywhere, so we try to get scraps of special love and attention and recognition to kind of prop ourselves up a bit. And one of the things that I learned over the years was is that, that instead of trying to become perfect, it was more of just not hiding and protecting anything that I was ashamed of or guilty about so that I could fully expose all these obstacles in the mind and instead of trying to become perfect it's more of having a recognition that I was created perfect that I don't have to improve anything and and that's another secret that we have to learn to let go of the self-improvement game you know we work so hard at becoming better people we work at getting more intelligence and more skills more abilities and we, we want to be better liked, more popular. You know, those are like core things. That's, there's a whole self-help book industry that is really about improving the self that you are to become a better you. And that's another secret that we've, we've played on ourselves, that, that we actually have to keep spinning our wheels to try to become better. And it's very relaxing when you start to realize that you don't have to become any better than you already are, because you were created perfect. And it's not through self-improvement, it's more like self-acceptance. Accepting the self, the innocent, beautiful self that we were created by God, instead of trying to improve. So that was a big secret for me, because I spent 10 years in, in university trying to become better at something. It was exhausting. You know, and, and then you get through all that and you think, and huh, I'm not any better off mentally, you know, emotionally with all this education than when I started. So it's another letting go. Um, I think ultimately too there's this fear of God, but it's not a fear of the real God. It's a fear of this make-believe God. The ego made up its own version of God, you know a God that would get angry at us, or a God that was watching over us, and, and more like that song about, you know, He sees you when you're sleeping, <laughs> He knows when you're awake, He knows when you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. Ah! How do you do that? You know, if you feel like God is watching over you, or even like that song, From a Distance, is that supposed to make you feel any better? No. God is watching us from a distance. Oh, he's, I hope he doesn't have binoculars. Uh, you know, you start to realize that, that that's another secret, that we've, we've believed in this ego and it's made up this false God, and it's the God that's in a lot of the religions where people are afraid. And Working with the Course, what I could see there was a secret there was that really there was a fear of God's love. But it was the ego's fear of losing itself. The ego's fear of being exposed to seen as a puff of nothingness. That's the fear of intimacy. We talk about fear of intimacy like in relationships. Really it's not a, it's not really a sexual fear of intimacy. It's a, it's a fear of dropping the mask, our persona, our mask of individuality and getting swept away by this glorious love that is so powerful that none of us can even imagine how glorious and powerful it is. 
But that's why we yearn to share that love experience in relationships, because something inside us knows that there's something more, more loving than anything that we've experienced on earth. And we don't give up, you know, we still, we still listen to the love songs, we still watch the romantic comedies, and with the Course we're just learning that it's actually, we're never going to experience that love in a specific or an interpersonal context. But the Holy Spirit is going to use what the ego made to take us back to that natural state of love that we were created in. So for me, those are the, the big secrets. It doesn't start that way. It always starts where you, you, you feel like you've, you've done something, you've, whatever, you've masturbated or you've, you've uh, stolen something or, or you mistreated somebody or there's something in your mind that you think is, you've judged as so hideous that you don't even want to face it. You just kind of try to forget about it or push it out of awareness, push it down. Even people that have gone through like sexual abuse oftentimes will, will repress and push that out of awareness because it's, it's too horrific to keep into awareness. And the reason we do that is because we believe those memories and those thoughts are real. <coughs> Underneath all of those memories and thoughts is the belief that we've separated from God. And it's really an impossible belief, but as long as we believe that it's true, we have judged it as, as horrific and we push it out of awareness and we could say that all unconscious guilt comes from that belief in separation from God. And we're not consciously aware of it. No one who walks this world is really a, aware of that belief or of the fear that that belief generates. But as we practice with relationships and as we practice as we move through time and space, it becomes more and more apparent that all of our guilt and all of our faulty decisions are coming from this little puff of nothingness. And we just kept it hidden in secret. So in the end, it's the ego that's, that's the guilty secret. And once we expose it, we can realize that, that we really had no need to hide it and protect it from the Holy Spirit. But all we had to do was expose it freely and openly and we're, we're free of it. And it works. It really works. Thank you. Okay.